the all who've just joined. We're st just waiting for the Honorable Minister uh, to, to join and then we can start the session. Okay, welcome everybody. I have uh, just joined. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Welcome. So uh, let me then start off formally. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rahul Shah, Mobile for Development Director at the GSMA. And I will be a host today. On behalf of the GSMA, I'd like to welcome first our guest speakers, the Honorable Sham Sundar Shikdar, uh, Chairman of BTRC. And of course, formally again, uh, sir, we would like to congratulate you on your appointment to the chairmanship. Uh, the Thank Honorable you. Afzal Hussain, uh, Secretary of Post and Telecoms Division. Uh, Ms. Atsuko Okuda, Regional Director for Asia and the Pacific uh, at the ITU. Um, Ms. Mr. Eric Aas, Chief Executive Officer, Bangalink Digital Communications Limited. Mr. Yasir Osman, Chief Executive Officer, Grameen Phone Limited. Mr. Mata Buddin Ahmed, uh, MD and Chief Executive Officer of Roby Axiara Limited and President of Antop. He'll be joining us shortly. Uh, Mr. Shah Buddin, uh, Managing Director of Teletalk Bangladesh Limited. and Brigadier General SM Farhad, retired Secretary General of AMTOP. And I invite you all to join me in welcoming our chief guest, His Excellency, Mr. Mustafa Jabbar, Minister for Post and Telecoms Division. Uh, very quickly on, I'll just very briefly introduce the GSMA and uh -huh. dialogue. Uh, the GSMA represents the interests of mobile operators worldwide, uniting more than 750 operators and nearly 400 companies in the broader mobile ecosystem. Uh, funded by the Swedish De International Development Cooperation Agency, CEDA, the national dialogues help countries achieve their SDG commitments by bringing together key government ministries, uh, telecommunications and beyond, so adopting a whole of government approach. Uh, with the mobile industry and the development community to demonstrate how mobile can be a positive force for societal change. Uh, Bangladesh was one of the first countries in the developing Asia region to outline a digital vision. We already know that mobile is central to the achievement of digital Bangladesh. However, the COVID-19 pandemic has put this into sharper relief. The report highlights the role of the operators uh, the role that they are playing in harnessing mobile technology to alleviate the impact of COVID-19 on the country's citizen. And it also provides a list of recommendations for the Bangladesh government and the BTRC on measures to ensure that mobile technology can continue to respond to the challenges presented by COVID-19 and beyond. Uh, the, li the link should now be, the report should now be available in the chat box. So. Uh, we have digitally launched it now. Uh, Leila, can you go to the next slide, please? As for the agenda, I think we will, uh, as, as you may have already seen, we will start with a presentation by uh, GSMA, followed by ITU, and then followed by a panel discussion. Uh, and then, of course, we will, we will uh, have our chief guest address at the, towards the end. Uh, before we begin, a few housekeeping points. Uh, this event is being recorded. So, Christina, if you haven't turned on recording, please do now. Uh, and everyone, please, could you mute yourself uh, unless you're speaking? Um, post any questions you have in the chat box, but include the name of the person it is directed to. For any reason, if you're unable to answer your question here due to paucity of time, uh, you can send an email to me at arsha at gsma.com. And then we can get you a response from the president or panelists later after the event. Photos, uh, we will be taking audience photos after the chief guest's address. Uh, if you consent to having your picture taken, please turn on your camera when requested. And I would of course like to thank the members of the press who are in attendance. And finally, uh, on speakers, you will receive a two minute alert when your allotted time is running out. So please begin to wrap up when you hear the alert. Uh, that's, that's uh, all the housekeeping. And now I will invite my colleague, uh, Ms. Leila Nesbitt Ahmed, Senior Advocacy Manager at the GSMA to present the key findings of the report. Leila, over to you. Good morning, everybody, good afternoon. So the report is titled, Keeping Bangladesh Connected, the role of the mobile industry during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Um, in line with our mandate in the GSME and, you know, with the mobile for development, which is to explore how mobile can be a positive for, force for societal change, this report focuses specifically on the COVID-19 pandemic and what operators are doing around this, this, um, this situation. The methodology, we use a mix of primary and secondary research for the methodology. So um, the primary research consisted of internet sources such as existing reports and newspaper articles on the COVID situation in Bangladesh, as well as using operators' quarterly financial reports, specifically quarter one and quarter two. We also focus on secondary research as well. Um, Sorry, we also focus on primary research as well, which consisted of an online survey sent, sent to all the operators in Bangladesh to better understand the COVID related activities, as well as follow up meetings to clarify on specific points. The objectives of the report itself were to highlight the role that operators are playing in harnessing mobile technology to alleviate the impact of COVID-19 in Bangladesh and provide a list of recommendations for the government and BTRC on measures to ensure mobile technology can continue to respond to the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. So the report starts off with looking at a few key facts um, on the pandemic. Um, one of the more interesting ones was around the impact on the economy where there was a reduction in, you know, across the board. So there was a reduction in economic growth. Um, up until the crisis, the economy had been growing close to 7% a year on average over the past decade. And it was expected, well, it was projected that there would be a 3.8% to minus 5% growth. Um, so that would be a drop of 6 percentage points from 2019. And I think this is quite interesting because of, um, in comparison to somewhere like the India economy, which was expected to go at, grow at minus 10.3%, um, you know, Bangladesh seems to be faring a little bit better. <laughs> Uh, there was reductions in year-on-year year 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 fall in exports, employment, and remittances. Another important factor about the, the effects of COVID was on the digital gender divide. Um, the digital gender divide itself, we have 29% of women who are less likely to own a mobile phone, and 52%, women are 52% less likely to use mobile internet. And we can see this manifesting during COVID with women 29% less likely to, than men to receive information on COVID. Outside of that, we had a range of, of measures implemented by the government, so public health directives, there was a national lockdown, stimulus packages, social protection programs, and um, most importantly, really recognition of telecommunications as an essential service. Now, what I found most interesting was the mobile industry's response. That is the measures that the mobile, that mobile technology and operators were using mobile technology to effectively utilize um, and contain the spread of the disease. And this was across seven key areas. So there was vital information. So using SMS and social media to disseminate information about COVID-19 to directly to mobile phones. There was um, collaborating with the government to leverage mobile data so that informed decisions could be made to control the spread of COVID-19. And this was specifically around the COVID-19 intelligence system. There was um, leveraging mobile and frontier technology to drive affordable healthcare through telehealth applications and facilitate e-learning. Um, the industry also worked with the BTRC to create an emergency telecoms plan. Two things that I'm going to um, highlight a bit more on the next two pages are what the industry was doing with regards to connectivity and affordability. So on connectivity, we can see that there was a 21% increase in data carried by mobile networks. And you know, the industry really, really um, stepped up to the challenge of ensuring that there was resilience. So we, we saw that at the beginning of the pandemic, download speeds fell um, due to a rise in the demand for data coupled with delays to network rollout as a result of disruptions to the shipment of equipment. But despite this initial setback, operators were able to maintain critical, sorry, they were, uh, they were able to undertake critical maintenance and repairs to sustain telecoms networks. And to date, they've been able to successfully maintain services and utilize pre-existing capacity. Another interesting thing to note is um, the implementation of specific measures to improve the affordability of mobile services. So I think we know that 
we know how important access to affordable digital content and services is to ensuring connectivity during the COVID-19 pandemic. And we can see that operators have implemented a list of temporary measures, so increasing data allowances, extension on customers' prepaid validity, free balance transfers, flexible payment options, introduction of special packages for low-income consumers and frontline workers, and zero rating of essential content. Now we move on to the COVID-19's impact on the mobile industry. So COVID, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic increased consumption of mobile services and mobile operators, as I previously prevented, um, presented, had stepped up to the challenges of the pandemic by taking specific measures to um, ensure that mobile technology could, utilize, could be utilized to contain the spread of the disease. Now, despite the introduction of these short-term measures to improve, to improve the affordability of mobile services, active subscribers numbers dropped by 2% during quarter two compared to quarter one. This was due to the difficulty prepaid customers experienced in topping up credit when movement restrictions were in place. And in addition to that, there were the financial constraints because of the lack of income, reduced or no income. Affordability was likely even more affected by, the, by an increase in supplementary duty, which I'm trying to hover over at the bottom, from 10% to 15% with a, proportionately dis with a potentially disproportionate impact on low income and price sensitive consumers. I think what's important to note is the industry's concerns around the revenue impact of COVID-19. So there was an increase in per customer data consumption of between 16% and 29%. And that unfortunately was unable to offset the reduced demand for voice calls, which fell by between minus 6.5% and minus 7%. Nor was, that able, nor was the increase in um, data consumption able to offset the cost of the short-term measures taken by operators, by operators to increase the affordability of services. As a result, we can see that there's been a decrease in service revenue, insignificant growth in data revenue, and an 8.2% drop in overall revenue. I think it's important to note that even though quarter three results showed more improvements, the industry is still yet to recover pre-pandemic levels of financial performance, and the unpredictable course of the pandemic means that prospects for future growth remains uncertain, undermining the, undermining the mobile industry's ability to continue to respond to the pandemic. Um, one of the, another thing that the report highlights is the impact of the a pandemic in affecting operators' efforts to connect the unconnected by expanding, expanding their services and developing their networks. So what does this mean? What can we do to accelerate connectivity during COVID-19 and beyond? So we know that Bangladesh is grappling with the COVID-19 crisis, um, and we, we've seen the importance of digital technology in sustaining connectivity and ensuring social and economic continuity. We think we, we the GSME, we think that you know now's the time for accelerated private public sector collaboration to jointly respond to the crisis and ensure that networks are well equipped to handle the exponential increase in digital traffic. So we have a few recommendations, um, suggestions for the government and the BTRC, and these are actions that we think that would be that are paramount in maintaining connectivity and bringing vital services to the population during COVID nineteen crisis. So we have promoting network resilience, so looking at um, deploying last mile connectivity, the continuity of the digital industry supply chain, streamlining planning processes, and um, publishing regulatory guidelines for active infrastructure sharing. Um, to, ensure the access, to ensure access and affordability of digital services, we recommend rationalizing industry taxes, duties, and fees, and incorporating a special program under SOF rules to establish a common mobile network infrastructure. Finally, with regards to leveraging e-health, big data, and telemedicine to address the health crisis, we recommend initiating close dialogue with key stakeholders um, to determine how to adopt a whole-of-government approach to address the crisis and creating a framework that clearly states how data is shared, handled, shared and handled during, between key sectors during the pandemic. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. I will pass this back to Rahul. Thank you very much, Leila, uh, for a good tour of the report. Uh, if there are any questions on the report, you can please you know, send me an email and we'll get back to you. Uh, let me now invite uh, uh, Ms. Atsuko Okuda. Uh, it is uh, it's my pleasure to have her here. And uh, Atsuko, over to you, please. 
Thank you. Um, thank you, Rahul, and Excellencies, and distinguished guests, and ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for inviting ITU to this important meeting of our National Dialogue for Digital Transformation in Bangladesh. As uh, the previous speaker, Ms. Data, highlighted, the COVID has a tremendous impact on the ICT infrastructure, as well as in society and economy as a whole. And that also impacts on the ITU's mandate to connect the unconnected by 2030. Now, uh, to understand perhaps the uh, complexity of the COVID-19 impact on the existing digital divides. Um, let me start my presentation with the first uh, graphs on where we were before uh, COVID-19 hit. Um, as you know, ITU uh, collects and consolidates the uh, various ICT statistics, including the fixed and mobile broadband subscriptions. And this is the, uh, the graph that shows the growth of uh, uh, subscriptions per 100 uh, inhabitants. Although, as you can see, there is a steady growth across all Asia and the Pacific. There is a significant sub-regional uh, discrepancies, especially between Northeast Asia and the rest. So we believe that even before COVID-19, there was a need to accelerate connecting the unconnected, both through the fixed as well as mobile uh, uh, broadband networks. Next slide, please. And this uh, was perhaps uh, largely driven by the costs, as uh, the previous uh, speaker, Ms. Leila, also highlighted uh, in terms of the affordability. We see that perhaps the costs of uh, uh, fixed broadband subscriptions as well as mobile um, could be one of the determining factors to expand rapidly the, uh, the connection. And as you see on the right-hand side, despite the fact that Asia and the Pacific is um, leading uh, in some technology sectors, we are still behind uh, the other regions. So we have more to catch up. And also one of the uh, salient features of uh, uh, Asia and the Pacific is the gender digital divide and the gaps between men and women having access to the networks and the, the information and data. Next slide, please. So, when the, the COVID-19 hits, as uh, uh, we all learned, there was a significant impact uh, in, on the ICT sector and society as a whole. And on the right-hand side, as you see, uh, we are delighted to be part of this partnership uh, with the GSMA and World Bank and uh, World Economic Forum to support the, uh, the response and recovery from COVID uh, all over the world. And we are also uh, supporting the uh, Broadband Commission's work to identify the key factors that will accelerate such efforts. And as you know, ITU also launched uh, a program, uh, Leg for COVID, which consolidates the lessons learned and good practices from all over the world, uh, emanating from the ICT policymakers and regulators. In summary, what we found so far is that the reliable and trustworthy digital services for all will be the a key essence. And um, we need to uh, accelerate the leveraging of ICT to help tackle the COVID-related uh, uh, negative consequences and impacts. And for that, universal, reliable, and affordable connectivity would be uh, uh, an essential factor. Next slide, please. So um, in my presentation, I would like to highlight the importance of whole of government and to see perhaps the importance of having an enabling ecosystem as a whole in order to develop this affordable and universal and reliable connectivity that can provide the services and address the COVID-19 responses and recovery efforts. These include, as you know, not only the uh, infrastructure and services, but the, um, the security, uh, digital skills, 
and human and institutional capacity and integrated digital strategy that can consolidate all different parts of the diagram. And I believe that the need to accelerate building these uh, um, building blocks is more urgent than before due to COVID-19. Next slide, please. So uh, in order to address the key elements of the, uh, the building blocks that you have seen, um, I would like to highlight some of the ITU's work um, to support member countries. As you know, uh, network and digital infrastructure is the uh, key uh, mandate and important pillar of ITU's work in Asia and the Pacific. As you see on the map, there are still um, many countries that uh, would benefit from accelerating uh, the, the connectivity. And we are addressing and supporting the member countries with a spectrum management and rural and uh, uh, rural connectivity, uh, broadband networks and uh, bridging the uh, standardization gaps, just to name a few. And next slide, please. These infrastructure and networks will be the building blocks to develop the, and launch the digital applications and services, including e-agriculture, digital finance, mHealth, and sustainable, uh, smart and sustainable cities with the digital government. We believe that these will be the uh, interface between the infrastructure networks and the citizens, and they deliver the most essential services that are most needed. Uh, in the uh, context of COVID-19 recovery and response. As you see on the right-hand side, ITU has developed uh, various tools uh, even before COVID-19, but they will be uh, more relevant perhaps in the current situation. Next slide, please. In order to develop the services, we need and we should create the uh, synergies across different uh, sectors and based on the whole of, whole of government approach for digital development. So as the diagram, diagram suggests, SDG itself is an interrelated, interconnected concept. When that is translated into ICT, it shouldn't be a separate um, ICT services, but it has to be an integral and integ uh, uh, coherent uh, uh, plan which can support the smart cities, smart villages, and smart islands. Next slide, please. And uh, I will perhaps uh, go through very quickly. So, um, as I said, uh, ITU's mandate is to connect the unconnected and there is uh, uh, different uh, groups of people who are particularly at disadvantage, including uh, women, people with disability and youth. And ITU has uh, specific programs and uh, approach to address uh, specific issues. Next slide, please. In addition, um, specifically to address the COVID related uh, uh, issues to enhance the digital inclusion, ITU is working with UNICEF to enhance the school connectivity through GIGA initiative and uh, uh, flagship program Connect to Recover, which addresses the urgent needs uh, to recover uh, with the focus on digital infrastructure. Next slide, please. So uh, in addition, as part of the, the whole of government approach, uh, ITU has a, a capacity development program on the ITU Academy a platform. Next slide, please. In addition, as part of the whole of government approach, we also have a digital innovation ecosystem that is trying to scale up the innovation and ecosystem into uh, uh, bankable projects and the products and services so that this will create a sustainability in the country. Next slide, please. Just to highlight a few additional points on how we can support the policy and regulations in member countries, uh, we are, are promoting this evidence-based approach using the econometric modeling. For instance, what is the impact of taxation, competition, and liberalization on uh, ICT services and industry as a whole? And currently, we are running different uh, uh, models uh, to come to the evidence 
that uh, we can use for policy uh, uh, recommendations. Next slide, please. In addition, we are uh, conducting research to identify innovative business models in the ICT sector using some uh, examples such as the Reliance Geo of India of scaling up the, uh, the services from uh, uh, infrastructure and uh, service uh, providers to add more uh, value or to provide additional services such as digital platforms. So we look forward to sharing some of these findings with you shortly. Next slide, please. And in summary, uh, what we found from the past experience and uh, uh, studies have been that the digital uh, regulation has an important role to play. And the best practices include such attributes such as consultative, Co uh, collaborative and regulate only when needed, uh, focus on sustainability, business and investment friendly and evidence-based. And we hope that some of the, the studies that I mentioned will provide the evidence to the way forward. Next slide, please. And in addition, ITU is supporting the regulators and ICT uh, policymakers by providing the platforms for linking a uh, group so that the questions and answers can be uh, exchanged uh, on social media platforms. And I encourage the participants to join us and to actively engage and uh, network with other regulators and ICT practitioners. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. The last slide uh, has the QR code to our Twitter account and LinkedIn, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Rahul, back to you. Thank you so much, Atsuko. Uh, a very interesting initiative uh, that you just mentioned at the end. Uh, I'm sure people will take advantage of that, uh, and so will we. Uh, it's now time for our panel discussion. So I will invite uh, Mr. Julian Gorman, the head of GSMA Asia Pacific, to moderate the discussion. Uh, thank you, Rahul. Um, I'd just like to uh, First, just outline what we're going to go through. Um, I would like to introduce, or I'll just introduce the panel, and I'll introduce the panelists. Uh, the panelists, I'll ask if you can keep your video on at all time through the panel, um, and we'll go through a series of questions. So just, just to give a bit of an outline and background to the panel, I suppose we've had some great insights from Layla on the, on the GSMA report on the impact of COVID-19 and how mobile technology has been core to uh, um, the resilience um, of digital Bangladesh during this period of time. And of course, we know that uh, COVID-19 is not over yet. And as the world moves towards vaccinations, the expectation is mobile will continue to play a major role um, in countries uh, managing uh, their COVID-19 response. So the key, the key objectives really of the panel is to provide a, an update and some real insights from the operators and the government leaders who have been part of managing Bangladesh's response to the COVID-19 pandemic by maintaining connectivity and understand the actions that key stakeholders are planning to take to, to keep connectivity as the crisis continues. And finally, what, what are the lessons and how do we capitalize on the lessons of the crisis to strengthen con, uh, connectivity beyond and, and after the pan pandemic? So if I'd just like to introduce the uh, panelists. So I'd like to welcome Mr. Shyam Sundar Sikta, the chairman of BTRC. Um, Mr. Mohammed Afzal Hossein, the secretary of Post and Telecommunications Division. And Mr. Eric Ass, the CEO of uh, Bangalink, uh, Bangalink Digital Communications Limited. Mr. Yasir Azman, the CEO of Grameen Phone. Um, I believe we're still waiting on uh, Mr. Mata, Mata Tab uh, Udin Ahmed, the MD and CEO of Roby, but he will be joining us shortly, hopefully. And finally, I'd like to welcome Mr. Mohammed Shahab Udin, the MD of Teletalk Bangladesh. So welcome, uh, gentlemen, and thank you for joining this, this panel. And I've asked you to all uh, um, put your videos on at this time, because towards the, at the end, we're also going to take a group photo. So maybe to get the panel started then, if I, I'd just like to refer to Mr. Mohammed Afzal Hussain, the government declared uh, telecommunications as an essential service during the pandemic and it's showing the importance of mobile technology to every, every citizen's life. How, in your mind, how central is mobile technology to the government's COVID-19 strategy now and moving forward? Mr. Uh, Mr. Afsal, are you there? Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. 
Yes. Uh, uh, Honorable Chief Guest of the Dialogue, uh, Honorable uh, Minister of Post and Telecommunications Division, uh, Mr. Mustafa Jabbar, respected Chair of the Panel, Mr. Julian Gorman, Head of APAC GSMA, Distinguished Panelist, Honorable Chairman of BTRC, Mr. Sam Sundar Shikbek, Mr. Mahathabuddin Ahmed, MD, and CEO Robi Exeter Limited, Mr. Yasir Azman, CEO Gramin Phone Limited, Eric Az, CEO Bangladesh, Bangalink uh, Digital Communications Limited, um, Mr. MD Shahabuddin, MD, Teletalk Bangladesh Limited. Very good afternoon uh, to you all. First of all, I would like to extend my uh, special thanks for uh, arranging this national dialogue on uh, keeping Bangladesh connected mobile services uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic situation. And, uh, and also uh, for inviting me as a panelist in your discussion. You know, we have declared, uh, we have celebrated our 50th great victory uh, day just yesterday. This year is also a landmark year for Bangladesh with the but centenary of our great leader, our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. But we had to celebrate all these occasions with limited arrangements to avoid mass gatherings due to the COVID-19 pandemic situation. In fact, this pandemic, uh, pandemic has changed our daily life and now we all are forced to adjust with the new a new situation. According to the last statistics of uh, Director General Health Office, uh, there are 4,95,841 confirmed cases uh, in 30,22,537 lab tests for COVID-19. Uh, and till now, a total of uh, 7,156 people died. We pay for all departed souls and wish every recovery for uh, early recovery for all affected citizens of the country. As you know, this pandemic situation has greatly affected the world economy and shifted our concentration to a life with more restriction. Following the consequence of the world and neighboring countries, Bangladesh has gone for lockdown from March 25 this year. Uh, people are forced to remain inside the home to avoid the mass spread of coronavirus. But our responsibilities have increased with, uh, in this lockdown situation. The telecommunications and internet sector were declared as emergency service during the pandemic period. All related government and gov non-government officials and subordinate workers were working together to ensure uh, the connectivity. Our efforts to ensure the mobile and internet network for all help people to be connected with friends and families through digital and virtual platform. All mobile operators of the country initiated special packages of mobile and voice data to encourage people to use mobile phone rather visiting physically. It ultimately helped them to be, uh, keep them inside of their home. Our efforts were appreciated all around the world. During this pandemic period, the demand for internet bandwidth uh, was increased by more than 160% in May 2020 in comparison with last quarter. In fact, people are getting used to uh, new as usual activities with online platform. Almost all institutions have selected a digital platform for conducting daily works. As a result, the data carried by mobile network was increased by 21% in the second quarter of this year in comparison with the first quarter. On the other hand, if we go for statistics, we find the total number of mobile phone subscribers in October 2020 was more than 168 million, who is 
was 165, 165 million in March 2020. The subscription uh, was in continuous increase, even in the time of this pandemic. The total number of internet subscribers was 103 million in March of this year, which have reached almost 111 million in October 2020. Besides, these, uh, besides those, mobile phone operators are working with government by using SMS and social media applications to live, deliver timely information directly to mobile devices. These tools are helping people to identify symptoms and take preventive measures as well as to communicate government advice on the pandemic situation. Customer data is a critical resource for supporting public health actions across the different phases of the COVID-19 pandemic. Mobile operators are working with key stakeholders, including A2I access to information and uh, the National Commun Telecommunications Monitoring Center on a COVID-19 collective intelligence system. The system combines location data from mobile phone with self-reported data and test reports to create dashboards uh, to assist decision making. For example, the system identifies hot zones where there is a high prevalence of infections. The pandemic has revealed the importance of technology in delivering healthcare solutions. Mobile operators are leveraging mobile and frontier technologies to drive more affordable and quality healthcare. Uh, operators are facilitating the uh, telemedicine activities to deliver healthcare for the people. Bangladesh ranks 10th among 187 countries with the highest disaster risk worldwide. Events such as the COVID-19 outbreak and the cyclone Amphan have reinforced the urgent need to build resilience in the country's infrastructure to reduce the impact of natural disasters and improve Bangladesh's ability to recover from shocks more easily. Operators have access to critical infrastructure and data that can fit into national disaster response mechanisms. By working with the right national frameworks and organizations, operators can significantly improve the ability of national bodies to prepare for and respond to natural disasters. Mobile operators and Bangladesh Telecommunications Regulatory Commission have formed a technical committee to draft the standard operating procedure that will guide the actions of the telecommunication services when responding to disasters. Beyond COVID-19 situation, uh, during this period of fourth industrial revolution, mobile internet will continue to connect people to new opportunities, drive economic growth and advance progress towards meeting goals of both SDGs and digital Bangladesh. It will also play a key role in supporting recovery from the impacts of COVID-19. Bangladesh's telecommunications sector is critical to supporting the development and growth of the country's mobile internet, especially in more remote areas. Force and Telecommunications Division is according with the mobile industry to resolve the issues of regulatory barriers and support the expansion of sustainable networks. We aim to ensure the industry's ability to fully contribute to Bangladesh's socio-economic development. Thanks to GSMA for arranging this dialogue on such an important issue. Thank you all. Wish you a safe and sound health. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And thanks for those uh, summary of where we've got to so far with COVID-19 and the importance of mobile from a government point of view. Then I'd like to maybe turn to Mr. Shyam Sundar Sikta, the chairman of BTRC. We've heard uh, from the ITU and the GSMA speak about the need for targeted policy and regulatory initiatives during the current crisis. 
Uh, in addition to the points already mentioned, what immediate policy and regulatory initiatives have been implemented, implemented to maintain connectivity during the crisis? And is the BTRC working on frameworks to better deal with future pandemics? Thank you, Mr. Shaya. Thank you, Mr. Julian Garman. Honorable Chief Guest, Mr. Mustafa Jabbar, Honorable Minister of post Communication Division, Honorable Secretary, and Honorable Distinguished Guests. Thank you very much, Paul floor to speak on these uh, questions that is assigned to me. Uh, as far as the question concerned, I'm giving the answer. In the present scenario, the countries are connected to com combat the disaster caused by COVID-19. Hence, digital development joint action plan and call for action, the collaborative initiative taken by World Bank, International Telecommunication Union, GSMA, and World Economic Forum is indeed time demanding and praiseworthy. Most of the issues discussed in the call for action are equally relevant to Bangladesh government of Bangladesh. Uh, it, relevant to Bangladesh. Government of Bangladesh with all its related organizations are working relentlessly to attain those pertinent objectives and discussed action plan. In this regard, Government of Bangladesh is keen to ensure necessary telecommunication facilities to its citizen. In addition to the regulatory initiatives that have been addressed, BTRC took following effective measures to maintain connectivity during COVID-19 pandemic. Number one, in spite of general holiday declared by the government, BTRC extended its all out support to a mobile phone operators to provide uninterrupted broadband services. Different internet packages are designed by the MNOs considering every class of subscribers. Free data and call services are offered to the needy people which are selected based on the usage pattern. These offers and packages have been examined and approved by BTRC in no time with, help, with the help of e Lothi C. Loading issues subscribers are given with free data and voice minutes to remain connected. Number two, as a consequence of the rollout obligations imposed in the licensing guidelines, all four cellular mobile phone operators have a stake, have, have a stable networks covering almost 97% geographical area of Bangladesh. Operators are trying to keep their network operational. Continuous power supply was a concern in this issue. Although during the general holiday, power consumption was reduced by almost 30 to 40%. Hence on priority basis, government is providing power to the operators. At present, all the operators are sharing their passive infrastructures as per the existing guidelines. This infrastructure sharing among the operators are encouraged to the purpose of meeting the exceptional demands for expanded connectivity. Tower companies are providing infrastructure facilities to the in a priority basis to fulfill their requirement, which in turn will strengthen the overall network quality. Number three, gateway operators have been given instructions to cater increased inter-operator traffic. In order to manage inter-operator traffic among the network operators, regulator has aligned the gateway operators, namely ICX and IZW, to cater increased flow to providing necessary permission in shortest possible time. Number four, telecommunication has been listed in the emergency services and given priority in movement. Number five, in this period of crisis, government is also providing permission to the extension of the connectivity capacity of different national emergency call centers, especially to cater the huge volume of calls 
to the health-related call centers. In addition, considering COVID-19 situation, government allowed call centers to provide their service from remote platform. Due to the taken by the regulator, the use of mobile financing ser financial services has increased to a great extent, which allowed the subscribers to recharge mobile balance, receive a salary, and to transform money without going outside. The regulator is working 24 by 7 and is in continuous touch with the responsible entities to ensure the correct flow of information in internet domain, especially in social networking platforms. Mobile big data technology has been applied to prevent the spread of diseases, create awareness, and assess vulnerability of specific areas. Then, to ensure un uninterrupted services, dues given with sufficient time to adjust on. BTRC has increased the SIM connection validity for the locked foreigners staying in Bangladesh. In reply to the second part of your question, the telecoms industry is characterized by constant change and evolution. And pandemics are such in nature that frameworks prepared for today may not be effective for tomorrow. Therefore, we have to prepare framework to provide emergency telecommunication service that may occur anytime. In Bangladesh, we always aim for a sustainable development in telecommunication sector. As an example, due to our rollout obligation, 99.9% .9 of the country's population is under the 2G network coverage and that of 82% is currently enjoying the benefits of 4G networks. Our secretary has already given you some statistics regarding this connectivity. By now, almost 80% of the unions, which are the lowest administrative body of government, are connected throughout high-speed fiber optic network. And by the mid of next year, the rest of the will be connected. Here, I would like to add some statistics in this connection. Already, we have laid optical fiber cable length about 125,000 kilometers. And we have covered our eight divisional administrative units and 64 uh, districts of the country. And also the lower level administrative uh, units uh, we call uh, upozalas, we have covered about 465 upozalas out of 488. And that is the, our uh, connectivity in our country. And that's all for the first questions. Thank, thank you. I will uh, think more at the time of my second question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. And <clears throat> congratulations again. Thank you for uh, making the time and the presentation in your first week in the, in the position. Um, it's great to hear about the flexible frameworks that are being planned by BTRC. So, of course, uh, Connectivity wouldn't be anything without the mobile operators. And so if I turn the flashlight to uh, spotlight to, to the mobile operators, I ask you uh, to keep your uh, questions brief into two minutes because we're running a bit out of short of time. Um, but mobile operators have really been critical in supporting the connectivity efforts during the crisis. Um, and the, what the challenges they have faced uh, has been many um, from connectivity, from working in under COVID control measures and access to resources have always been difficult. So while trying to maintain connectivity and how this affects users is a real problem and a real challenge for mobile operators. So if I start with Eric, um, who I, it's good to see here again. I haven't seen him more than 10 years since he was in, in Indonesia. Eric, what are the main takeaways for Bangalore from this crisis and how has the organization changed the way it works and, and how, how have you seen customer behavior change? Thank you, Julian, and uh, Honorable Minister, Secretary, Chairman of BTRC, and congratulations to you. Uh, members of the industry and media. Um, Salam alaikum, very good afternoon, and thanks for inviting us. Um, my main reflection after and when I look back on the last few months is uh, people. 
it's people and how people in Bangladesh and how people in the industry have been dealing with a very big crisis of the country. Uh, we should not, you know, when we see this presentation from GSMA telling about all the initiatives in the industry and we hear from the regulator and others about everything that has happened, we shall not forget that here are extremely competent people that have been working extremely hard under very difficult conditions to make these things happen. And, and they have been doing that in a country where also the people of the country are pragmatic. They are, to some extent, maybe unfortunately, used to crisis and they are resilient. And I think that is uh, that combination of, of all these efforts and people's attitude and mindset is maybe the key to, to uh, the, the way we have been able to manage the, the crisis and get through and, and actually done very well in the country. And I don't even dare thinking about if all of these barriers had hit an industrialized country, they wouldn't be able to cope with it. Now, to be more uh, concrete, I, I think it's, uh, we have of course uh, looked at all the, the customer behavior, people, moved around and so on. So I'm not going to repeat that part of the thing, but of course we did a lot of things from the operators. One thing I feel uh, we should uh, also mention is the uh, CSR activities that the industry has been contributing to uh, during the crisis. All of us got very much involved in the communities and in the societies and doing our very best to help in parallel by, by running the business. And this has been a very important contribution. I think we have done, uh, done very important things for, for the people of Bangladesh during the crisis. Um, and I think um, this also shows the, the attitude of people. I think it's also important to remember that since June, all telecom customers in Bangladesh have been paying near 6% more for telecom services through the supplementary duty and VAT thing. So 5% supplementary duty plus VAT is, is nearly 6%. So all telecom users are using 6% more to get the same services as before. This has, uh, of course, given more income to the government and that was probably necessary at the same time as it has put more uh, pressure on the operators because customers, they would naturally spend a little bit less than they get more VAT. So this has been a, a, a little bit of a, a thing that we had to deal with and had, uh, had put a set, uh, been a setback for us, uh, which we have been dealing with. I think uh, generally speaking also, um, during the months of crisis, and, and I, I would like to remind everyone that the crisis is not over. Uh, we still have a pandemic and there is still have a lot of, uh, of, of, uh, of things happening in our country. During this time, um, I feel one area where we could have done slightly better is maybe to have focused all uh, regulatory matters on managing the crisis and making things as easy and, and uh, uh, smooth as possible for the industry. And uh, I must admit, I feel there have been a little bit of a disproportionate amount of energy going into managing other types of regulations and other types of things that was not really necessary to do at this time. So that would be one of my recommendations that we look at now while the, uh, while the crisis and the pandemic is still continuing. Can we put the less uh, urgent matters aside and focus 100% on, on, uh, on uh, raising the industry back to where we were and, and uh, to, in, uh, so we can focus 100% on, on the crisis at hand. All in all, uh, my summary, uh, we have been doing very well, but there's still an opportunity for us to do even better in the months to come. Thank you very much, Eric. I think there are great points to raise there that in a time of pandemic, um, the need to get people online has to be, you know, has to find a nice balance um, between moving the industry forward and the gov government needs for taxation, but also getting people online and using um, for a more resilient digital Bangladesh. So if I turn to Mr. Shahab Udin from uh, Teletalk. How has Teletalk supported your customers through this difficult time? And what, do you, what have you done really to manage the difficulties prepaid customers face when topping up? Because there's a lot of challenges in keeping prepaid connected there. Mr. Shahan? Yes. Thank you very much for giving me such opportunity to express 
the some uh, views of such, such type of international gathering, especially for the, this type of uh, dialogue. As you know, Territory Bangladesh Limited is a state-owned operator. So first of all, uh, we uh, 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 thanks to, uh, to GSM and also uh, with, uh, we thanks our chief guest, especially for our minister, honorable minister, Mustafa Jabbar, and honorable secretary and honorable chairman BTRC and um, uh, all others, uh, co colleague of uh, C of uh, uh, MNOs and also the uh, those who are participants in this gathering. I thank, uh, thanks all of all. First, you know that uh, uh, talk uh, during the COVID time, we have to face a lot of problems, especially like other operator also, and in, especially in, uh, in for uh, physical um, top up. Uh, that means that uh, we have to use uh, uh, our sale uh, channels in the dealer and uh, retailer uh, distribution channels. But uh, when uh, uh, we have to face the lockdown, especially in, uh, in COVID time, then uh, really we have to face a lot of problem. And, and then um, we try to uh, change our uh, um, uh, selling channel from physical channels to uh, uh, in a digital site. And uh, gradually uh, we have to face uh, from uh, from the benefit, uh, gradually to face the benefit from a physical channel to uh, digital uh, channel. Especially, we have to say, uh, uh, especially we are using uh, MFS platform uh, like Bcash and like um, uh, Nogo, like uh, Sure Cash, and like uh, and another you are, uh, another top up system you are using our uh, customer. Uh, online recharge also and ATM, uh, ATM also, and then we are using our uh, customers uh, we get uh, to emergency balance and mobile uh, balance transfer system also. The, but still, we know uh, within the pandemic situations, uh, the business and the economics becomes a crisis, face a lot of crisis, and uh, individually, uh, you know the uh, purchase powers of the. Most of the individuals have to reduce. So uh, gradually, um, uh, our business becomes uh, critical, and uh, um, especially as a state-owned operator, and we are the small operator compared to others, our three friends. So we have to face the um, bigger than the others operator so for the, our top-up uh, issues and for the, our. Um, uh, maintenance and operation issues, but uh, we have to uh, gradually have to uh, improve this situation. And initially, we have to lose our uh, lot of customers. Don't, don't, when they shifted from urban to the village area, you know, their cover is uh, network cover is not to the uh, smart into the village area. But uh, we gradually, is, uh, you know, we improving our uh, network. Cover is the, uh, within the pandemic also, and uh, and, and now uh, we are facing uh, especially um, two things. Uh, one is the um, tower co uh, issues, and another is the bandwidth issues. You know, you know those who our revenue is becoming uh, and decline, but uh, we have to pay the same uh, uh, amount um, for tower co and the bandwidth, and we are increasing our. Uh, bandwidth uh, to, to deliver the uh, customers and uh, to make the digital connectivity and uh, to make the uh, our customers at a um, normal situation, especially for the e-learning, e-education, and e-commerce and others, e-health also. Uh, we, but uh, uh, but our revenue side, uh, we have to face some difficulties. You understand? So thanks uh, of all for your. Uh, uh, questions and uh, discussions of this, and we thanks all uh, all the our um, um, GSMs and supported and I too also, and um, thanks our chief guest and BTRC uh, uh, chairman and our honourable secretary also. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, we're moving right, I think, right along, we're running short time. So I ask uh, Mr. Yasir to I'll turn to Mr. Yasir now. Um, ask him to keep it to two minutes if he possibly can. 
Um, ensuring network resilience has been critical this year. And what measures have you taken or what did you take to make sure people could stay safe, safely connected? And how have you seen demand change over the time and where you foresee it running from now? Thank you, uh, Julian, and <laughs> Honorable uh, Chief Guest, um, Minister, Post and Telecommunication Division, our um, respected uh, BTRC Chairman. Congratulations once again, um, Honorable Secretary, uh, Post and Telecommunication Division, my industry colleagues, colleagues from uh, GSMA, and uh, all the audiences today. Uh, very good afternoon and assalamu alaikum to all of you. I think, you know, it's like, Today, when we are talking about life has got used to with uh, this pandemic, you know, it's like so many things we have forgot that what we have faced back in March and February in Bangladesh. Um, uh, and we, we found a way to live with this. Uh, yesterday, I could not get a uh, table in a restaurant. Uh, it was that crowd in Dhaka. Uh, so somehow, his life goes on. But when all of um, us talking about this topic and I was listening uh, and, and, and the presentations, you know, I, I was thinking, wow, what have we done together during this period? You know, it's like um, uh, it was uh, something, you know, it's like back in March and February, if you recall. So I would not basically, for the sake of time, I would not basically get into deep in everything, but few things I would like to highlight that to maintain this network resilience. Uh, that what, are the, what are the things that is important? It's not that what actually Grameen Phone has just done like this, uh, because it was a complete different situation. We were not used to in the history of our last 24 years, Grameen Phone, the way we operated today, all on a sudden we see as a completely different picture. We were proud of saying that we, are, we run our service operation center 24 hours, 365 days. And that has got changed all on a sudden you are not coming to office. You are not allowed to come to office. How do you do that? So, it's not, it's not that easy. And to make it happen, there are a few things, few, few principles we had to follow. And, and I would like to highlight before I come to our network. One is that collaboration. You know, it's like, it is not us what we can alone do. It's an, it's an industry, our ministry, BTRC, all the government bodies together coming and finding out the way so that we can operate. And I, I, I can, I, you know, we may forget, but we had a group uh, in WhatsApp and first time ever I have seen that all the government bodies with the leadership of our uh, telecom minister and BTRC officials, the DGs and um, uh, commissioners, there was a group set that all the security agencies, all the ministries coming into one WhatsApp group and make an agile way of work to solve the problems. And that's how we solve the problems of you know, declaring telecom as an emergency service. And that's how we could continue going out and fix things. This is one. The next, second thing is that exploration. You know, it's the new ideas to bring in, bring in to make your network you know, up and running and safely keep people connected. That was important. Every day there was innovation. Third thing, you know, it's like, if I am not safe, if I am, I'm not able to work, then it's not only that I cannot do my commercial activity of Grameen Phone. It, it helps Bangladesh to keep connected. If I can innovate, then Bangladesh innovates. And that's important. And how can I keep myself safer, you know, and, and then keep continue running. So these were important to uh, maintain our resilience into the market and keep our network going and keep people um, connected. I, I still, you know, it's like we have to take an approach where we cannot let our people down because if we are down, if you are not, if you are not able to run our operation, that Bangladesh cannot innovate. That we need to understand. That in the industry has that importance, and we have all felt that. So um, uh, this this collaboration, this leadership from the ministry coming all together, solving the issues, that really helped for us to continue our network operation and con keep country people um, uh, uh, connected. And, and there, I, I, if I may give a few things, you know, it's like all the operators have faced you know, the traffic boom by almost 20, 25 to 30% level. So it's not that only tra traffic boom. If, if, if this boom happens all of a sudden in Dhaka, we probably know that Dhaka has a higher network traffic, but it has happened somewhere else where you have never thought of, and you are not ready. It's an over the night, it's a decision that locked down and you move, move out from the city and you see a completely different picture. And what do you do? In a, in a normal situation, in a week, 
uh, hypothetically, if you need, let's say 10,000 tuning of your network, at that point of time, we needed four to five times higher tuning of your network. And then you are not in office. Then you are not with your team. Then you are not with your leader. Then, you know, it's like that's what the digital Bangladesh over the last 10 years, the way we have been equipped to work digitally, and we as an operator were prepared, that helped us overnight to basically scale up to the level of four or five times higher that how can you fine tune your network and continue serving your customers. Uh, and, and you see the change of demand that YouTube, social networking, instant messaging, OTT messengers, these has beca became like an humongous in terms of volume it used to be. So the way you fine tune your network is also different than what it used to be. And we were successful, you know, making the availability of our network at 99.5%. I, I will stop here in terms of network. Just think, I, uh, whoever is aware of the knowledge about Bangladesh, during that pandemic situation, even in May, when pandemic was high in the peak, we had to face the one of the biggest you know, cyclone of fun. It was the 20th of May. Next day was Eid. People were going for leave, and we had to face that. One angle is a pandemic. The other angle is the cyclone. How do you manage that? It's not, I would say that Gavin Fon alone could met, again can do that. The collaboration, the ideas, the explorative mindset, that held together over two days to bring back the network service because we know that how much people are dependent on our service during this period. And it was almost half, half a country, almost half a country was out of electricity. 3,000 electricity poles were down and then we had to deploy almost 1,000 people hands on hands with our, you know, energy ministry to fix it fast because you know that's the time when people really needed telecom services up, and that is something how we work together with the government authorities to the security agencies. Even at, at times, probably operators had to collaborate with each other, forgetting about the competing with each other because it's a national emergency. So I would say that. When I say 99.5% availability, we were able to successful through collaboration, through exploration of ideas. And then of course, you know, you're keeping your people safe because you need to keep others safe and connected. And it's not only network. If your network is up, you need to bring in innovation in your product and services so that your resilience network keep them connected. And there, you know, bringing in home solutions, bringing in, you know, um, all the data, new packs, affordable price, Helping people, those who are you know, out of money, how can they can connect their, keep their uh, uh, mobile connected to the digital platform? If not, there is a balance. How can you provide emergency balance? How can you give you more time to realize this emergency balance? So all those innovation was needed during that time. And we as Grameen Fund, we have put our best effort to bring in innovation the faster way and by empowering our people not by telling them you need to do this, rather giving them empowerment that find out the solution and then exchanging each other with the other operators. We had to basically come up with, you know, the tagline in the mobile, everyone would say, uh, stay safe, stay home, all the awareness program of, of, of um, uh, during the COVID period. And lastly, I would say that um, when, once you have the connected of your people, then coming days, we need to understand that this pandemic is not over. Yes, we, we, we are now in a situation, we are able to cope up with this. We are living our life in a much adjusted manner, but it will continue. And what is needed to understand that this industry is not in vertical product like any other product and services being consumed by the customers. This product, this service is horizontally connected any other services, any other industry. So keep nation connected, keep other industries to serve their customers. It is important that we come as a forward leaning um, uh, body together with the regulators and stakeholders to solve the critical issues fast so that you know, we can pass this pandemic and come back even stronger. And that's very important. And that is the role probably we need to play together. Thank you, Zulian. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. I think so far amongst the operators, we've seen or heard so much about how the depth and the, the commitment of the teams in the operators have managed to keep uh, 
connectivity, keep customers connected and how, how important that's been to every individual in those organizations. So against that backdrop and against the comments from Eric about the increase of taxes during the period, I hand it to, to Mr. Matab of, of Roby. How has the pandemic affected the affordability of mobile services for the customer? And what are the measures taken by Roby to facilitate affordable internet access during this critical time during the pandemic? To you, Mr. Matab. Uh, thanks, Julian. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me here. And uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank our Honorable Minister Jabbar Bhai, uh, our Honorable uh, Senior Secretary Abzal Bhai, our uh, respected new chairman, uh, Sham Shundur Dada, what we call him. Uh, and we love him a lot. He was part of our industry and he has come back to our industry. So very happy for him to uh, start and uh, continue to contribute to our industry and our respected colleague within the industry. So uh, I think many point has been already covered, like in terms of, you know, affordability issue, why it was so critical in pandemic, and if I share a couple of data points, I think that will help us to understand what kind of actions we have taken considering that. Like one of the data points that we have from BIDS, which is Bangladesh Institute of Development Studies, almost 16.4 million people during this COVID time has come uh, to the level of uh, poverty rate. You know, whatever the poverty line was, that line, uh, that 16.4 million people come, came below that poverty line. So that is one impact and it has some direct and indirect impact. Another group of impact was direct effect of lost earnings because of illness or to take care of sick household members. Like many households had that uh, people with that diseases and when that in, disease entered into one house, it actually spread in the whole house, the whole family suffers. So that was one direct impact. Another direct impact is a lot of people lost their job. Like Asman was saying, even a lot of people migrated from the urban areas to rural areas. And that was also resulting from unemployment. And that unemployment level is as high as 13%. So you can think of in a highly densely populated country, 13% losing their job and they're migrating to different places. So that also aggravated the problem statement. And then finally it talks about, I also talk about migrant workers. So that actually defines the level of affordability challenges we are having. And during this COVID, we lost a big chunk of the users. Like, you know, almost five, more than half a million consumers completely stopped using mobile phone. And that's the time all the operators, and not only Ruby, all the operators came forward to give free uh, uh, voices, free data to use or minimum cost data. So those all kind of things that uh, as an industry, we came forward to support. Now, Already, uh, uh, Eric said, during this time, when all of us were, should have been together to make it happen, to make it easy for our uh, populations. But unfortunately, that increase in taxes was totally unexpected thing that happened. The other unexpected thing happened is at that point of time, we needed some spectrum to give a better quality services. As some of you already said, the data demand picked up uh, as high as 20%. Uh, and we could not support uh, that. And uh, we had to take the blame of uh, uh, poor quality. Now, affordability point of view, what Ruby did, uh, along with other operators, we significantly reduced the price. And I can share the Ruby data. While our consumption of data went up by more than 20%, but our revenue went down by 2%. So we had the opportunity to monetize that situation at the cost of people, but we did not do that. Rather, on the request of our Honorable Minister, he repeatedly said, this is the time to come and contribute to the society, to the, to the country. So listening to his demand, we actually brought down the price rather than taking the opportunity. If you had taken that, uh, you know, uh, that kind of mindset, we could have uh, made good revenue out of it, but we didn't do it and number speaks for itself. Uh, and I think the number of other operators would be almost the same. The other point that comes out very clearly that at that point of time, when the government thinks about giving support, and I know, I think one great work that was done by our Honorable Minister, we had a group of uh, all the MNO leaders, uh, BTRC, uh, our Honorable Minister, and all other policy makers in one group. Whenever we were making one request, like one of the things I remember that uh, we requested to our Honorable Minister, telecom was not considered as uh, 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 emergency service or essential services. So we are having a lot of difficulties even fixing network. 
I remember within nine hours, our honorable minister made it happen. So that was a one key support that we got from the government, but other support we could not get. And one of the concern behind that is we could not support and stand behind our consumers as much as we should uh, in that difficult situation because of the disintegrated approach. If I talk about our honorable minister, secretary and chairman, they would be aligned on many things, but unfortunately they need to also consult with finance ministry, you know, PM office, many other areas, and that integration doesn't make it happen. So in summary, I would say is uh, taxation policy could have been uh, made our life easier. Uh, just to say very briefly, today of our total revenue, 53% of that goes to government in different form of taxation. Subscribers are taxation already we talked about. It was already very high. In case of voice, it is 33.25% and data 21.75%. Just think about it, a country where the penetration scope is huge and we're driving digital Bangladesh vision, where we're having such a huge consumer tax. So we expected it to be reduced, but rather it got increased, making the affordability even more challenging. Multi-layer ecosystem has made it even more difficult. Like consumers, nearly 17% of mobile revenue for delivering services on the top of that 53%. And spectrum price, we all know, so I'm not going to dwell on that. So in summary, what Ruby did, we significantly reduced the tariff. Uh, in some cases, we gave it free of charge. Fighting COVID-19, we worked with government, we worked with A2Y under the leadership of our honorable minister, come up with different, uh, uh, users of technology like artificial intelligence, crowdsourcing, developing the model along with the other operators. All this work we have done and even, you know, the call center that we have, Triple Three, Ruby is sponsoring that for years. Collaboration on enable affordable access uh, that we have done with doctors, special tariff for universities, doctors and all this actually, we have done all the possible areas it is possible. And facilitating doorstep services. When it is locked down, you cannot go to Houses. So we were giving uh, doorstep services with full preparation of safety preparation. And last but not the least is digital recharge, uh, which has already been talked about. Uh, we made it those, uh, you know, recharge through uh, apps or through recharge. We are giving special discount on that. So we made it affordable and we also use digital as a mechanism to make people's lives uh, easy and affordable. So I can go on and on, like so overall, I think as Ruby, we have done quite a lot as an operator, industry, we have done quite a lot. I wish uh, some of these taxes ideas could have been looked into. I know our honorable minister tried hard, but unfortunately because of the disintegrated uh, approach of our uh, system, uh, he could not achieve it or as an industry he could not achieve it. Uh, so I think we should take it as a learning and going forward, we should more focus on the affordability of the people, not. Uh, what is being given up uh, and assume that it is probably the benefit is get taken by the operators. In general, uh, operators as a whole, we contributed to make it easier and more affordable for our users during this COVID period. Over to you, Julia. Thank you very much, Matab. I think the great, great points there that uh, a whole of government uh, approach maybe would produce a different outcome when it comes to uh, responding and, and the application of taxes during such a critical period. But now shifting to looking beyond the pandemic, I'm going to go back now to the, to the government representatives on our panel, um, to uh, the chairman, Mr. Shyam Suda Sikta. I'd like to say, you know, we've heard lots of good news about vaccines. We, we've stabilized much around the, the pandemic response. We look forward to a post-pandemic world in the next few months. Um, what are BTRC's key priorities in the post-pandemic world? And I'm conscious you're only just in job this week. But how will these shape future policies and regulations in the telecommunications sector to increase the number of citizens benefiting from a digital Bangladesh? And I ask you to keep your response to, to one minute as we're running short of time. Thank you, Mr. Gullian. Uh, this is actually the high time for us to figure out our priorities that would shape future policies and regulations in the telecommunication sector to increase the number of citizens benefiting, benefiting from the digital Bangladesh. In this regard, Bangladesh may adopt the guidelines from ITU as a reference and consider, we consider issues as a key priority areas. Number one, assigning spectrum 
within allocated bonds, uh, bands so that operators can provide multiple types of applications and services from narrowband via service to broadband intensive applications. Expedite is infrastructure deployment in order to expand network coverage and increase telecommunications or ICT services. Number three, facilitate fixed services, provide, fixed service providers so that they can increase network capacity to respond to traffic increase from households due to teleworking, online education, and entertainment, among others. Number four, connect strategic points, such as hospitals, health centers, and food collection centers, as well as key infrastructure related to vital services and commerce. Number five, facilitate satellite connectivity to rural and remote areas by installing broadband terminals in key locations. Number six, increase collaboration with different stakeholders, including different ministries, other government and non-government entities and regulatory bodies from other sectors to ensure the wide uses of digital services. Number seven, guarantee users the minimum quality of service and quality of experience. Number eight, ensure secure cyber space from the users and create mass awareness about safe use of internet. Apart from this, I would like to thank Mr. Asir Azman. He has uh, mentioned very two important things according to my opinion. And he has said that collaboration and cooperation is very much essential for, doing our, for, for, uh, uh, for making development in our telecommunication sectors. I would like to uh, give you a commitment that I have to make a congenial atmosphere here. And I would like to see to it the uh, representative of all mobile operators in our Bangladesh. And then we shall go for other, and particularly for uh, expansion of our uh, innovations, for exploring our innovations. That is very essential in our country, I think so. And uh, apart from this, uh, I, I can mention some other uh, areas that we should give very importance to uh, work with the uh, policy uh, areas. Number one, network ex expansion, such as tower sharing. We can go for tower sharing and working on it, and we will be working it, and more tower sharing activities should be done here, and we will do this. And then fiber optic transmission guidelines is very essential. I, I personally uh, feel the necessity of this uh, guideline, and I should, uh, uh, I, I, I like to mention here that we shall go for making this guideline. Another thing, quality of uh, service guidelines is already done in our country, but I think uh, this should be reviewed and it, it should be uh, our uh, very, uh, um, very, 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 very uh, essential to the uh, service providing uh, sectors for our mobile operators. And emergency communications activities uh, should be here and we shall uh, go for policy making of this, uh, 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 for this. And finally, ILDTS policy is uh, also to be uh, reviewed in our country. And I uh, like to mention here that I, again, I, I will take the suggestions of my honorable minister and according to his suggestions and instructions, sitting with the CEOs of mobile operators companies. And then I shall go for the uh, required activities. That's all from my part. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chairman, and I think I welcome and the industry welcomes your, your personal commitment uh, and encouraged by your commitment to, uh, to advance on those issues you raise. So finally, because I know we have the Minister waiting for his keynote pres uh, speech, I'd just like to refer once more to Mohammed Afzal Hussain, the Secretary of PDD, um, around accelerating digital connectivity in the wake of COVID-19 requires a whole of government approach. It's been mentioned a few times by a number of people on this panel. And collaboration between the mobile industry and government stakeholders is going to be critical. So as the post and telecommunications division has a key role in this, what will the ministry do to enable and support collaborative action and be the champion for the, for the industry um, in a whole of government approach? 
to you, Mr. Hussain. Uh, he is here. Yes. He's still online, perhaps. He's online, perhaps, but his video is not here. Well, conscious that, uh, ah, then Mr. Hussain. Mr. Julian, would you repeat, please? Uh, I was <laughs> otherwise yes. engaged. Uh, for, your, for your final comments, um, it's been uh, accelerating digital connectivity in the wake of COVID-19 requires a whole of government approach. And that's been mentioned by a number of the speakers here on this panel. And obviously PTD uh, has a key role in achieving this. So what will the ministry do to enable and support collaborative action and a whole of government approach? And, be the, and will PTD be the champion for whole of government in uh, digital Bangladesh future? Uh, thank you, Mr. Gorman. Uh, actually, uh, uh, during this pandemic situation, uh, we uh, we are trying uh, to uh, 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 strengthen our all the uh, digital activities so that uh, our people uh, we can serve our people uh, in different ways and in a, and we can uh, uh, continue our e economic activities. So we are uh, trying uh, our best. Uh, to uh, enhance our digital activities as well the uh, uh, mobile operators activities and uh, for that we are uh, taking uh, different uh, steps as well as different projects uh, in our telecommunication and mobile operators uh, activities and we are also uh, providing uh, providing all out support through our uh, 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 BTRC, uh, BTRC, uh, you know the uh, our uh, uh, BTRC and other uh, other organizations like our uh, telecommunication um, uh, telecommunication department, and uh, these uh, these are all from us. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you for those final comments. And I think, uh, unfortunately, we don't have time to go to our audience questions, but I'd ask you all to smile at the camera while we take a photo of the uh, panel. Um, we'll get a green light from uh, the uh, Thank you so much. photographer. Uh, if we just, uh, well, we're just going to have a photo with the panelists to start with. So if we just have the panelists and non panelists um, uh, take, keep your video off. If you're not on the panel, if you have your video off and we just get a photo. Um, okay. Um, that's good. And with that, uh, thank you for your um, participation in the panel and your insights. And I look forward to uh, moving forward in Bangladesh with the, the commitments and the comments that have been made and the recommendations to move forward. So back to you, Rahul. Thank you. You're on mute, I think, Rahul. Thank you, Julian, and thank you to the panelists uh, for a very interesting discussion. I think there are lots of uh, actions we can take forward. Uh, now it's time, and it's my pleasure to invite our chief guest, the Honorable Minister of Posts and Telecommunications Division, Mr. Mustafa Jabbar, to deliver his address. Sir, you have 10 minutes. Over to you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rahul. Thank you, Julian, for conducting the whole session my friends from DSMA, ITU, my ministry colleagues, and my colleagues in the telco industries. I was listening to the whole discussion, and I am amazed that the panelist has described almost all the issues, particularly in relation to COVID-19. In fact, our secretary is a new person in the industry, but by this time, he has understood the pros and cons and the details of the industry. And our BTRC chairman, he's a very old guy. He spent a lot of time in ICT and telecom and 
particularly is a very old friend of mine. I started disturbing him since I was not even a minister. But I also spent a huge time with him when he was secretary PTD. And in fact, all the CEOs of telcos who have spoken today are very close to my heart. I can simply say that there is hardly any difference between the CEOs and myself. They can talk to me anytime, anywhere. And I try to understand the problems of the industry and try to solve it. I feel that it's my guardianship, which is very important for the telco industries. And I try to maintain my responsibility to solve their problem. In fact, this really a very high time for us. We have just passed our 50th victory day yesterday. This is the year of the centenary birth anniversary of our father of the nation. And this is also just before the deadline of knowing Bangladesh as digital Bangladesh. That's 2021, which is also the 50th year of our independence. So this is a very critical time, very important time. And we have lots of sentiments. We have lots of, um, uh, in fact, aspirations and lots of expectation from the people. You know that the whole world experienced an extremely different experience during this COVID period. And it was definitely a challenging thing for a country like Bangladesh, which was basically a agro-based country and missed the first and second industrial revolution and could touch the third industrial revolution and was hardly prepared for the digital age. But thanks to our Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina, that she declared digital Bangladesh in 2008, it's the 12th year we are passing on. And now I like to thank all our telcos and all those who are involved in the digital connectivity for their role in this COVID-19 period. As a whole, if you say, I'm really happy and thankful to our telcos, particularly they had to work in so many adverse situations. And we have, Martha has mentioned already that, which I don't personally agree, the people had to go through a process where they had to pay a huge amount of taxes. And that was definitely not a friendly situation for our common people to participate in the digitization process. Also, there are lots of challenges which you have already heard. And I fully agree that these challenges are to be removed. I can only assure that we have tried our best. The best possible thing we could do, we have done it. And the best possible thing we can do, we'll be doing it in near future. I, I, as you have heard from Martha, in fact, it was a very big challenge at the beginning of the COVID-19 situation that how we can maintain our network at all, whether people can get the service of our telcos because people could not come out at the street, could not just maintain their network or provide any kind of service, any kind of recharging or anything that was that possible. 
this is for the first time for the history of Bangladesh in 49 years that post. All this was declared emergency services, and you have heard the collective effort of the government and the telcos helped us as far as possible to really overcome the situation. I like to thank my telco friends, whether we have requested anything, whether this is a toll free connections or a free SMS or a free ringtone or whatever we have asked them or providing most valuable data. I am really, really uh, thankful to all of them. They have provided it. And due to that, the situation in Bangladesh has been different and Bangladesh could fight being a so populous country, we could really manage the severeness of the attack of COVID-19. I like to again reassure as our BTRC chairman has mentioned that we understand almost each and every problems of our telcos and we try our best. But as you understand, a bigger government is a very big organization. So it's very difficult to just coordinate with the whole government system and do something which might be really necessary because everybody doesn't think in a way my ministry thinks. I'm really happy that my secretary, the present one, the previous ones, the BTRC chairman who has come and the present BTRC chairman, I don't have any problem with them. And I find that definitely our telcos doesn't find any problem with any of them or the BTRC people or the ministry because we work together like one organization. But it becomes very difficult for us to place our opinion and to carry out throughout the government. And we have to just depend on so many things that we cannot fulfill the expectation. These are not that the telco's expectation is that the connectivity should be there, the prices should be affordable. It is also the motto of the minister itself. We want that thing. If you ask me, I'll just say that this is a fundamental right of the citizen to get internet to oh, everything. And we are working also for that. As it has been mentioned that we have tried to create infrastructure throughout the country. You'll be happy to know that BTRC's SOF fund has been utilized in a fantastic way. It was created in 2012, but we started using it at 2018. We have seven projects and these seven projects will definitely uh, do something to close the digital divide of the country. We are connecting the remote areas, the islands, the houses, the bees, and we are using the Bangabandhu Satellite One and also mm -hmm. physical connectivity to gap the digital divide. And at the end of 2021, my aim is that there will be no house where we will not be there, either through mobile connectivity or through broadband connectivity. The cable connectivity will also be reaching the villages by that time. On the other hand, uh, you might be knowing that we have already tested 5G. We are ready for 5G. 
and we have a commitment by the government to launch it as soon as possible. We are working for the third submarine cable. We are also working for the second satellite connectivity. And what we feel is that by 2021, infrastructure should be available all over the country. And on 1st of December, I had a meeting uh, with our Honorable Prime Minister. She has instructed that each and every person should be connected. And uh, it, it's, it, it's, I feel it's an order to us that we'll have to fulfill that one. By this time, I also like to thank our telcos that I requested them just when the pandemic started, we felt that the demand for uh, voice call is lowering and the demand for broadband connectivity is rising very high. So it was very important that the present 2G and 3G connections are to be upgraded to 4G. And I'm happy all my telcos has committed to me that by end of this year or the beginning of the next year, our connectivity will be upgraded to 4G. That will help the whole nation because you know 95% of the internet user of our country are depending on at this moment, mobile connectivity. So if we can spread 4G connectivity all over the country, I think there will be a fantastic thing and a fantastic change in the availability of the broadband connectivity. And I don't think that everybody will be looking for 5G and the connectivity of 4G will be sufficiently enough for most of the people. What I feel is that 5G will be definitely necessary, but might be that's for industrial use or high purpose uses, which grow in course of time. But 4G is the need of this time for today, in fact, yesterday. So that is the thing. And I am really happy that our telco has already started and most of them has upgraded most of their uh, towers. Also, we are just changing the situation which is prevailing. We are in fact stuck with towers. We gave the tower licenses, but in last two years, it was very difficult to have new towers. But now the situation is different. Towers are coming up and I have got commitment from the tower companies that our telcos will not suffer for any tower scarcities. As BTRC Chairman has mentioned that we'll also think of providing solutions for tower sharing and active sharing and all other things. One thing I can tell you that whatever we have done might be in some cases we have taken some more time, but we have done everything in consultation with the industry. We have not pushed anything on our own except the tax issue, which is out of, out of my ministry's control. My ministry has never done anything which was not accepted by the industry. And feel, I feel that it will continue. I have all the trust with our new BTRC chairman that he will definitely look at all these issues. He is so friendly and he will talk to everybody and those lackings we are having, whether creating laws, guidelines or policies, we will do it in collaboration with the uh, telcos and I hope that you will find a differently better situation by 2021 in to our uh, whole 
industry situation. I am really happy that GSMA talks to us every time. In my three years time frame, I have not, not only been benefited by attending the Mobile Congress and also been benefited with so many discussions with GSMA. We have learned a lot and we will be definitely welcoming your suggestions, your proposals, and it is definitely a good idea to know the, where the world is happening, where GSMA is thinking, and also I congratulate ITU for contributing in our development, and my special mm -hmm. thanks to ITU because they choose me as their uh, uh, VCS chairman, and it was uh, really a very good occasion for me becoming the chairman of the VCS summit. So today I am again uh, so happy, and I am really, really grateful to all of you, the arrangements mm -hmm. from GSMA and also the presentation from ITU. I can only assure you on behalf of the government that we think for the people, we work for the people, and whatever we create, whatever we provide, that is for the people. So I also feel that the government itself alone cannot do anything. So government has to go with the industry and that's the most critical policy we have taken. We will be going together. We are, you can think that we are from one family and we will be talking to each other. We will be listening to each other and providing policies which are very helpful for the growth of the telco industries. I personally feel that digital connectivity is the highway for the digital industrial revolution. Whether you call it a fourth industrial revolution or fifth industrial revolution or society 5.0, doesn't matter. It is the digital age, it is the digital revolution. We are in and digital highway is the main highway which will drive through this whole change and transformation. And those people who are here, they are the leaders of this digital transformation and responsible for creating this digital highway. So I uh, respect them, I congratulate them, and I assure my help in every sector to support them, to help them to be by their side. Thank you very much for just giving me the chance to express my thoughts here. I can assure you, Bangladesh had a long, bloody war to win their independence, and it's the 50th year coming up. As a freedom fighter, I was involved in the war of liberation. Same as Yasir Rasman's father, he was my leader in the liberation war, also my leader after the liberation war as a journalist, because my career was also a, as a journalist, as his father was a journalist. So as a freedom fighter, I can say, we had the dream of a prosperous country, a golden Bengal declared by our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. So let's build up the golden Bengal and we will be welcoming your support in building this golden Bengal. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Joy Bangla, Joy Bangabandhu. Uh, thank you so much for uh, your excellency for an excellent speech and even more importantly for the support you have shown to the mobile industry and the leadership. Uh, 
I think at this point, we are at the almost at the end of the event. May I request uh, the members of the audience to turn on their camera so we can get a photo of the audience. Uh, as long as you're comfortable having your photo taken, please, please join us here. Uh, Okay, I think uh... Okay, hold on one more. Okay. Uh that we have one one, one more screen. So, cuz we we have too many audiences. Okay. Christina, your face seems to be low. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. right. Okay. Done. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Uh, now, uh, let me hand over to uh, Brigadier General S.M. Farhad, retired uh, Secretary General of AMTOP, to deliver the word of thanks. But before I do that, I would like to thank Farhad Bhai and his team for their support in organizing this event. Over to you, Farad Bhai. Uh, you're on mute, sir. Uh, Farad Bhai, uh, we can't hear you. You're on mute. Okay. Ah, yes. Right. Thank you. So uh, it has been an excellent event where all the stakeholders of mobile industry joined together to participate in GSMA National Dialogue, Keeping Bangladesh Connected, COVID-19 Response. Well, uh, the preparation started almost a year back when GSMA and MNOs started to discuss about a few events. Meanwhile, as the COVID-19 came as a pandemic, so it became now COVID-19 response. I must thank my industry colleagues for their contribution and support in uh, preparing the report by GSMA. Thanks to my industry colleague. It was none but GSMA who took a lot of trouble in preparing the report and finally launching it today. A big applause for the GSMA. <clears throat> and the event would have been incomplete without ITU. I must thank ITU for making this event more meaningful. Okay. Now let me turn to the participants. First, the Chief guest, our honorable minister, who never said no to the call of the industry. Whenever I requested him, I called him. He spontaneously uh, positive and he gave his consent. And you also heard that it was him with whose persuasion during this pandemic, the telecommunication or the mobile communication was declared as the essential, essential service during this pandemic. So thank you very much for giving your precious time here today. And secondly, the chairman BTRC, who just joined gladly and accepted the invitation, who just joined BTRC the other day, just two days before. And when I requested, he gladly accepted. And I had a chat with him that what all would be there. And he said that no problem, because you know by now that he had been in this industry for quite a long time. So he knows about it quite a lot. So, sir, thank you very much for uh, taking the trouble and showing your response. And that also speaks that how much importance you give to this industry. Our secretary of PTD, who has always been very supportive to the industry. Sir, thank you very much for uh, making your time and participating in this event. And of course, the CEOs and the MD of the operators who are driving Bangladesh digitally in all odds and are the kingpin in keeping Bangladesh connected. Thank you all the CEOs and the MD and your team for your untiring efforts. You know that media has always been very effective in bringing the issues in the forefront. Our journalist friend, you will speak for the people, we speak for the industry. Thank you very much our print and electronic media. 
last but not the least, the team GSMA. Your effort is excellent in making this event happen. And finally, I wish you a happy Christmas and a happy new year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Farad Bhai. Thank you everyone for joining. We are looking forward to our next round table, which will be in February on digital inclusion. Uh, we will keep you updated about that. So I look forward to that gathering as well. Thank you, everyone.